You won't believe what Zelensky just did in response to Putin's troops. North Korea warns of war if test missile is shot down, threatens to turn Pacific Ocean into firing range. Breaking news, U.S. plans to move arms inventory to Taiwan for showdown with China. Putin or Zelensky? Who will win this war? China or Taiwan? Who will win in this resistance? What is North Korea up to? Let's answer on this questions in this video. On Tuesday, Vladimir Zelensky instructed for more Ukrainian forces to be dispatched to assist the soldiers defending Bakhmut, where Vladimir Putin's troops are facing substantial casualties. The Ukrainian president made this announcement following a meeting with his military leaders on Monday. The Wagner Group, Putin's unofficial army, along with the regular Russian army, are attacking Bakhmut in the eastern Donetsk province from the east, north, and south. Although military analysts anticipated that Ukraine would orderly withdraw as the town is not of strategic importance, Zelensky contradicted this expectation in his late-night speech. He declared, during the staff meeting, I directly inquired the Kortizia commander, General Sersky, and Commander-in-Chief Zelensky about their opinion on the upcoming defense operation in the Bakhmut area. The options presented were either to retreat or proceed with defending the city and fortifying its defenses. Zelensky reported, both generals responded by advising against withdrawing and advocating for reinforcement, and this viewpoint was unanimously supported by the staff. There were no opposing perspectives. Zelensky instructed the commander-in-chief to locate suitable troops to aid the soldiers in Bakhmut, stating, Bakhmut has achieved and is achieving one of the most remarkable outcomes during this war throughout the entire conflict for Donbass. The Ministry of Defense in London reported that Ukrainian troops were able to strengthen their positions in the northern region of the city. According to the Ministry of Defense's most recent intelligence update, the fighting over Bakhmut is taking a toll on both sides. Although Russian troops previously advanced into the town's northern region, Ukrainian forces have likely secured their defensive perimeter over the weekend. The ministry stated that a Russian attack on March 2nd destroyed a bridge over the only paved supply route into Bakhmut that remains under Ukrainian control. The weather's muddy conditions are likely impeding Ukrainian resupply attempts as they increasingly rely on unpaved tracks. The ministry also highlighted that the Wagner Group and the Russian Ministry of Defense's public disagreements about the allocation of ammunition highlight the difficulty of sustaining the high number of personnel and ammunition required to advance using their current tactics. For months, Putin's forces have been attempting to capture Bakhmut and claimed that taking it would be a significant step toward seizing the surrounding Donbass region, their first significant battlefield success in over six months. However, Western strategists argue that this would be a Pyrrhic victory, considering the time and casualties incurred. Although Ukrainian troops have been reinforcing positions to the west of the city in apparent readiness for a possible withdrawal, they have yet to decide to retreat. Some reports suggest that Putin's troops are experiencing casualties at a rate of 7 to 1 compared to Ukraine in the fight for Bakhmut. The intense fighting has depleted artillery reserves on both sides, with thousands of shells being fired daily along the eastern and southern fronts. Kiev's European allies are working on a deal to procure more ammunition. On Monday, the head of Russia's Wagner mercenary group, which has led the attack on Bakhmut, stated that he required the regular army to supply him with more ammunition to win the battle. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the founder of Wagner, urged coordination and cooperation to block the Ukrainian armed forces. He accused the Russian Defense Ministry of intentionally starving his men of ammunition, a charge the ministry has denied. The Russian Ministry of Defense has not responded to Prigozhin's plea. On Tuesday, state media KCNA reported that North Korea had warned that shooting down one of its test missiles would be interpreted as a declaration of war. The country pointed the blame for rising tensions at a joint military exercise held by the United States and South Korea. In a statement, Kim Yo-jong, the influential sister of leader Kim Jong-un, 
stated that Pyongyang would view any military action taken against its strategic weapons tests as an act of war. She also suggested that the North could potentially launch additional missiles into the Pacific Ocean. Despite being prohibited by the United Nations Security Council, North Korean ballistic missiles have never been intercepted by the United States or its allies. The North's intention to launch more missiles over Japan has brought the matter into the spotlight once again. Kim claimed that the Pacific Ocean did not belong to the Dominion of the US or Japan. According to experts, if North Korea carries out its threat to turn the Pacific Ocean into a firing range, it would not only showcase its military resolve, but also allow the isolated and nuclear-armed nation to make technical advancements. In a distinct statement, the head of the foreign news section at North Korea's foreign ministry blamed the U.S. for aggravating the situation by holding a joint air exercise with a B-52 bomber on Monday and planning U.S.-South Korea field exercises. The United States flew the B-52 bomber in collaboration with South Korean fighter jets in what South Korea's defense ministry claimed was a demonstration of force against North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. The two countries will conduct over 10 days of large-scale military exercises known as the Freedom Shield Drills beginning next week. Approximately 28,500 U.S. troops remain stationed in South Korea as a remnant of the 1950-1953 Korean War, which concluded in an armistice, not a peace treaty, resulting in the countries being technically at war. U.S. wants to relocate East Asia arms inventory to Taiwan, Defense Minister. According to Defense Minister Chiu Kuo-cheng, the United States plans to move its arms inventory from East Asia to Taiwan. Chiu stated that the topic of arms inventory is frequently discussed in the military, and Taiwan's army will assess its own equipment regardless of foreign inventory entering the country. Premier Chen Qianjin stated that both Taiwan and the United States are committed to maintaining peace in the Indo-Pacific region. Chen added that maintaining peace in the Taiwan Strait is a common goal among many democratic countries, and Taiwan must prepare for war to prevent it from occurring in the future while also ensuring its sovereignty remains intact. The decision to transfer arms inventory from East Asia to Taiwan by the U.S. is not only a show of support for Taiwan's defense against China, but also a calculated move that risks further escalating tensions and increasing the likelihood of a conflict in the region. And while Taiwan has the right to prepare for its defense, it must also pursue diplomatic means to prevent such a conflict and avoid putting itself and the region in harm's way.